an idea I have on how to organize your projects in your GitHub repository is for every project, we have a reference architecture, right? And in your reference architecture, we have all the things we did in it. For example, in this reference architecture, we are creating a VPC with public and private subnets. We are using Night Gateway, Web Server, Application Load Balancer, Route 53, and GitHub. So the first thing you need to do is, I've created a Word document here that shows you the idea that I have for this project. So um, just a second. Okay. So let's start with the first project in your account. Let's say you have complete this deploy a static website and you want to organize this project in your GitHub repository. The name of this project is deploy a static website. If you prefer to name it a different name that you think makes sense, you can name it that. So what I did is I copied this name and that is what I put here. So I called this host a static website on AWS. Then the next thing I did is what services did I use to complete this project? To get the service, all you have to do is look at the reference architecture. So here we are using a VPC. That is why in my notes, I've had VPC with public and private subnets in two different availability zones. In this project, we also use internet gateway and there are some other resources that are missing here that I should probably add. One that I can think of is security groups. So here I can add uh, security, right? So I'm just adding something there for security group, but you can be more detailed for the security group. So basically the idea here is for every resource you use to complete the project, list those resources under the title here and be specific about what you use those resources to accomplish in that project. This is also good to help you understand the reference architecture. So when you are looking at the reference architecture, you are able to understand what each of the resource in your reference architecture is doing as it pertains to your project. So that is why I've listed this here. So you go through your reference architecture and you will list all the resource you use to complete the project and what each resource is doing. Then at the end here, I just type a brief example for you guys of what you can type in ChatGPT. So here I type a description here of, I recently finished a DevOps project where I hosted a static HTML website on AWS, utilizing the resources listed below. So you can have this here. I've uploaded the reference diagram and the script I used to deploy the web app on an EC2 instance to a GitHub repository for the project. Please use this information to create a readme file for the project. Copy all this and paste it in ChatGPT. This is an idea I have on how you can use ChatGPT to create a readme file for the project because ChatGPT can do a much better job than I can do, right? Even when you post this in ChatGPT, whatever it gives you, you can always edit it until you get your readme file to exactly what you want it to do. So this is the idea. But before I paste it in ChatGPT, what you are going to do is go into your GitHub account and you are going to create a repository for the project you are working on. So let's say we are working on this project, deploy a static website on AWS. In my GitHub repository, I'm going to paste it here, right? And for the description, I also have a, on that project, you can also see a description here. I'll just copy this part, this deploy a static website on AWS using the management console. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it here under the description. Then you can choose to make your repository public or private. If your repository is public, that means that when you add it on your resume, someone will be able to see it. Since this is a repository showcasing your projects, you must leave it public for other people to access it. Then here, we'll click add a readme file and we are going to click create repository. So once you create the repository, the next thing we are going to do is add the reference architecture for this project in the repository. So here you see add file, click on it and you'll see this drop down, click upload files. Then if you click in here, you can browse to the location of the file on your computer. The reference architecture for my project is this HTML file. So I'm going to click on it and click open. You can see the HTML file here, scroll down and click commit. I've uploaded the reference architecture for the project into the repository. It is this HTML file. If you select it, I believe here, it should show us the path to the file, which uh, this is the path to the file, right? I like that GitHub has put this icon here. If you click this icon to copy it, 
it will copy the full part for you. But understand that once you upload it, the parts to the file is here. And to get the parts to the file, you have to click on the file and go in there. So to go back to my repository for that project, I'm going to click the name of the repository here. Then the next thing you are going to do is if you have any scripts that you use to complete that project, you can also upload the scripts into your GitHub repository. So here I'm going to click add file and I'm going to click upload file and I'll click choose file. Then I would browse to the location on my computer where I saved the script, which is um, here. Yeah. This is the script. I'm going to click open and the name of the script is here. I'm going to click commit changes. And I've uploaded the script into my GitHub repository and you can also see the script here. Once you have uploaded all the assets you use to complete the project, and this part, I'm talking about the projects we are deploying in the management console because for that project, we are not writing any Terraform code. So the only thing you will have to present is the reference architecture for that project and possibly the script you use to deploy your application on the EC2 instance or your container. So that is why I have uploaded the script here. Then if you want to even be more specific, you can copy this script and in the description, you are going to paste in chat GPT. You can also press enter here and also add a section. This is it. And paste your script there, right? Or you can be more specific. So this is the script I use to deploy the web app on an EC2 instance. So you have your script here. So what I'm going to do is copy all this information and paste it in chat GPT. So once you've pasted your description in here, you are going to press enter. So, so here, ChatGPT is creating the readme file for you. Okay, so we've created the readme file, which is right here. So here, host static web app on AWS, project overview, the architecture, right there, deployment script here, deployment steps here, which it is very accurate and repository structure, deployment script and architecture diagram, additional resource that is pointing to AWS documentation, GitHub repository where you have the script. So it is saying that if you in the GitHub repository, obviously you have to update, update this to where you your repository is. I can do a better job than this. So you guys always be open to using AI to be efficient at what you are doing. It doesn't make anyone dumb or smart if you choose to use AI or not. But certainly since AI came out, it's been very helpful in helping me be more productive, especially when I'm working at work. So I use it a lot for my personal project and also the projects I work on at work. So use AI to help you if you are trying to create something. I think AI would do a good job, at least from a starting point. And you can see I didn't just type anything in ChatGPT. I created my document first. Well, which this is the starting point. You create what you want to do. And when you tell it specifically what you are trying to do, it will be able to give you an accurate result. So this is the readme file. I'm just going to click here to copy it. Then when I click that, I'm going to come back to my GitHub repository. This is the GitHub repository I just created. And this is the readme file for that repository. Once you select that readme file, click edit here. And I'm going to remove this and paste what ChatGPT created. You can see when you paste it, it also adds it because the readme file in your repository is a markup language. And when you put this hashtag symbol and this star, it means something. That is how you are able to make them either a title or just a regular word. So that is why when you use ChatGPT, ChatGPT also create those things for you. So when you paste it in your readme file, they show up exactly how they are supposed to show up. So here, this is what ChatGPT created. So I'm just going to remove because this part, we don't need that part. Then if we scroll down, we don't need this part. So then we are going to click some always in the way. Then I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to click commit changes. And you can type a message here or you can just click commit changes. Now you can see in your repository, right? When you click on the repository for that project, there is a professional readme file for that project here. You can see the title, project overview, architecture, deployment script, deployment step, repository structure, and AWS resources here. That's really good. So this is what you need to do for each of your project as you complete them. So at the end, you have an organized 
professional repository that is showcasing all the projects you have worked on. If someone comes into your repository, like a potential employer and click on the link and they see a repository that has a structure like this, it makes you look good. The only other thing I want to add to this repository, which I was searching on ChatGPT, is something I haven't done before, but it said that you can add it. And I want to test it is, it will be nice to also have the image of our reference architecture in this readme file. So that way everything is showing there. It is showing the reference architecture, all these informations. So, and I also have it in my notes here. It said that I need to add this in my readme file. So I'm going to copy this. Before I copy that, it's this part to image. I need to change it. So I'm going to go in my repository. This is the image I uploaded into that repository for the reference architecture. Remember the part to the image, you can copy it here. When you click that, it's going to copy the part. Then here, I'm going to replace this. Let me zoom in in case if you guys can see what I'm doing. This part to image, I'm going to replace it with that one. I think this alt text, if you want to type a description for the image, we can type it. But for now, I'm not going to put anything there. So I'm just going to copy this because this is the first time I'm testing it too. So I'm not sure how it is going to. So I'm going to edit this readme file again up here. I'm going to add the line and press enter twice. And I'll just paste the image there. Let me commit that and see what it looks like. I'm going to click refresh. So this is what it will look like. I'm going to edit it again. I just remove just that line and commit. There you go. All right, well, that is what your repository will look like. The reference image, the title of the project. So where, well, the title of the project, it is up to you if you want to move it up or down. Then the information. This is a professional way to showcase your project in your GitHub repository. So that is how you organize your project in your repository.